today what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to use the PACE decision making grid as a way to make our decisions. And so let me just make sure I've got this working right. Oh, perfect, I do. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is, is come up with a problem. That's what the P in PACE stands for. And so just as a simple example, you obviously wouldn't use an entire grid normally to make this kind of decision. But to make this simple, let's say our problem is where should we go for lunch? And so where to go to lunch? Okay. I apologize for the uh, third grade lettering on this. Um, it's the best my little tablet pen will do. It's a lot harder to write with than it looks. Okay, so next let's look at um, our criteria. And criteria means what things are important to me in this decision. So when I'm thinking about going out to lunch, the first thing I'm thinking about, of course, is the taste. Okay, how good is this going to you know, how, how good of a taste is, does a restaurant have? The second um, criteria that I might care about is cost, because even though I'd like to say that cost doesn't matter, it does, you know, I have a limited amount of money. The next thing is um, location or distance, because I only get so long for lunch, and so I, don't, I can't go just anywhere. And so I'm gonna put distance. Okay, and finally, my last criteria perhaps will be healthiness. How healthy, oops, sorry, how healthy is the food? All right, so now that I have my criteria, let me come up with my alternatives, my, the, the options that I have. Well, thinking about what I could have, I could go to, um, well, I could stay in the cafe. Okay. I could go to Subway. I could go to one of my one of my favorite um, fast food places, and that's Carl's Jr. I am from California, and let's see. I could go to uh, McDonald's. I'll just put MCD. Sorry, that didn't look very good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rate each one of these things in each of these categories from one to five. So when I look at the cafeteria, for example, okay, um, in taste, if five being it tastes really awesome and one it tastes horrible, I'm going to give it a two. I know probably most of you would give it a one, but you know, they try. It's not inedible. Subway. Subway's not my favorite sandwich place. I mean, I wish I had a Quiznos close by, but I could give it a three, I think. Carl's Jr. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, I really like that a lot. I'm going to give it a five. And McDonald's. Hmm, it's kind of average. Um, I'm going to give it a three. Okay, and now if I look at cost, well, the cafeteria, well, it costs like $2.80 for a teacher to get a meal. Well, that's an average cost. It's pretty good, so I'm going to give it a four. Subway, I can get a foot long for $5, so that's a little more expensive. I'm going to give that a three. Um, Carl's Jr., um, it's going to cost me at least six bucks to get something that I really like. And so I'm going to put that down to a two. McDonald's, it's pretty cheap. I like things off the dollar menu there. And so I'm going to give that a four. Okay. Let's see. Next. Distance. Well, the cafeteria should get a five because it's the closest. Subway is just down the street. Um, let's give that a four. Oh, but Carl's Jr. is kind of far, so I'm going to give that a two. And McDonald's is kind of in between there. I'm going to give that a three.
Okay. So let's look at The next one we're going to look at is healthiness. Oh, a cafeteria. I mean, it does follow those federal health guidelines, but I really can't say that like nachos for lunch is very healthy. So I'm going to give it way down to a. I'm going to give it. A, I'm going to give it a one. I just have to because I just think that the food is kind of gross. Okay. Uh, Subway, you know, you can get a pretty healthy sandwich, sandwich at Subway. I'm going to have to give that a five. Carl's Jr., if I go there, I could get the turkey burger. And so I'm going to give that, let's see, it's still like a three. McDonald's, can't give it very good. Let's give that a two. All right, so now I've got kind of a rating for each thing, but... Beyond that, now I have to decide, well, what is really the most important, what are the most important things? Because is everything just equal to me? Well, no, not really. Um, I'm on a budget. So let's just say that cost is the most expensive, is the most important thing to me right now. I'm just going to put a little times two right there. Okay. That's my way of remembering that that's like kind of twice as important as any other thing. And now I'm just going to add these up. So I've got two plus four times two is eight, so that's uh, 10, 15, 16. So the cafeteria gets a score of 16. Three, and then three, that's six, that's nine, that's 13, that's 18. Uh, Carl's Jr. gets five plus two, that's seven, plus two, oh no, sorry, plus four, so that's nine, 10, 11, that's a 14. Carl's Jr., three, yeah, it's 11. I mean, my, I say Carl's Jr. McDonald's, three, plus eight is 11, 14, 15, 16. All right. So now that I've looked at my criteria, um, I can see that there is a clear winner, and that is Subway. And so which alternative met, best meets my criteria? Well, that's Subway. You know? because it um, is inexpensive and close and healthy. Um, so what I decide to do is go to Subway, go to Subway for uh, Teriyaki chicken sandwich. There we go. All right, so this is how you fill out a pace decision making grid. Um, obviously, you're not going to do it for something as simple as where to go to lunch, but these ideas are, are basically the same. Please make sure you fill out the entire grid. Please make sure that you are thoughtful about your decisions and you're really thinking about how your different alternatives match up to your criteria. All right, good luck.